My experience with the Kingdom Hearts series has been a somewhat unique one. As I mentioned in my video comparing Kingdom Hearts to Undertale, until recently I had not actually been able to play any of the Kingdom Hearts games, I'd only watched the cutscenes. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about each of these games from the perspective of someone who loves their stories but didn't give two craps about the gameplay for the longest time. Hey, what's up everyone, I'm Phil Games, and this is my spoiler-free Top 10 Kingdom Hearts games, which actually includes all of them because reasons, based only on story. And since most of my audience is still Undertale people, I wanted to make it spoiler-free so that more people can watch it, so if you're going to comment spoilers, make sure to label it as such and then press enter a bunch of times before the actual comment. Now, let's begin. Number 10. Coded. In last place pretty much by default, Coded is known for having virtually nothing to do with the rest of the series. <laughs> get it? Cause, eh, never mind. I don't actually mind the story all that much, it's tonally and thematically consistent with the rest of the series, it just feels like there's way more story than necessary to tell the information that's actually relevant to the rest of the series. The HD movie even included parts of some of the individual Disney worlds which feels like very unnecessary runtime padding. I would say that the last 20 minutes are really the only important parts, but some more recent developments have hinted that the rest of the story might be important for understanding some things that happen in the future of the series, so... Oh boy, I guess we'll just have to see where that goes. Number 9. 0 0.2 Birth by Sleep A Fragmentary Passage. That's... That's a title. Again, I'm sure this is kind of to be expected just because of how short this game is. I know 0.2 gets a lot of flack for needlessly retconning extra things into the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, but after I watched it alongside the concurrent events of KH1 in Everglow's Kingdom Hearts timeline, link in description as always because most of the footage is probably coming from there, I had a much better appreciation of it. The retcons actually made more sense to me. Still, that doesn't make them any less unnecessary, and conflicts with some things in Birth by Sleep's secret ending. Also, Mickey did nothing wrong. He had no choice to do what he did. Give the mouse a freaking break. Number 8. Kingdom Hearts 1 Okay, okay, I see you about to throw your chainsaws at me. Just calm down and let me explain. I have a very deep appreciation for this game as it's the one that started this whole beautiful mess of a series. The fact that it's on the lower side of the list shows just how much I love the other games in this series. And don't get me wrong, I definitely understand the appeal of a simpler story about a random kid who gets the fate of the universe suddenly thrust upon him without all the extra difficult to understand turns and concepts, but I really do love the more complicated side of the series. The absence of many of the characters that are introduced in Chain of Memories in KH2 just makes KH1 feel a little bland to me story-wise. The fact that Nomura clearly didn't have a full idea of where he wanted to go with the series after it doesn't help. I do like this game's story, I just like the other ones better. Number 7. Key slash back cover slash unchained key slash union cross. And now you see why I was able to make this video technically a top 10. These three mobile games and one HD movie all tell one story, so I figured it made sense to put them together. As much criticism as these games get for, you know, existing and being mobile games, they actually do have a pretty good story to tell. It's probably one of the darkest in the series so far. The most exciting part about it is that it's not finished yet. Union Cross contains one of the darkest and most hotly debated events in all of Kingdom Hearts right now, and even more exciting is that it seems to be leading up to a point where some answers will finally be revealed. Just bring this story into Unreal Engine 4 in some way, Nomura, please! It needs to happen! Number 6. Chain of Memories If I were to describe the feel of this story in one word, the first one that comes to my mind is precious. Its use of memories as a device in the story allows it to get really deep into what friendship means and how important it is, which is really at the thematic core of the entire series. It also have a few plot twists that will take you on a pretty good emotional roller coaster, 
although one of them is slightly ruined a little early if you're actually playing the game for reasons, but that's beside the point. The fact that it all takes place within one building does hold it back a little, but not all that much, at least in the case of the main campaign. Reverse slash rebirth, though, could use some work. It's not bad, and is a very important part of Riku's character arc, but the writing is certainly a bit uncomfortable at times. I mean, that's true of the whole series, but I can especially feel it here. I mean, come on. They can smell the darkness in people. Like, how am I supposed to feel about that? Because I just feel weird. Number 5. Birth by Sleep This is a really weird one for me for some reason, and was probably the most difficult in this list to place. Birth by Sleep has so many moments that either bring a smile to my face, tears to my eyes, almost, or a chill down my spine, or all three at once. I actually just decided to move it up one spot after writing that sentence. It's got one of the most epic final battles and one of the darkest endings in the whole series. So what are my problems with it then? I think the biggest one is that it took me several times of watching through it to feel the friendship between the three main characters, and especially to feel the love between the three of them and their master. We're told about it, but it's a bit difficult to actually see. Also, the after credits epilogue definitely should have been the actual end of the game, and then they could have taken one of the 87 parts of the secret ending to use as the epilogue. But for me, the good things about Birth by Sleep story still outweigh the bad, hence why it's at number 5. Number 4, Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah, yeah, crucify me for this not being at number 1, just let me explain first. The beginning and ending of this game are phenomenal. So many of the best characters in the series had their introductions right here. The reason it's a little lower than you might expect is because of the middle. Not saying it's bad or anything, far from it. Remember, this is still the number four spot, which is really good. As I've mentioned before, I don't care all that much about the Disney World stuff, which is obviously the bulk of the middle of the game, as it is with pretty much all Kingdom Hearts games. The difference here is just how long it is. There's some other stuff too, all the stuff with the Final Fantasy characters, but I don't care all that much about them either. Don't get me wrong, they get some of the best fight scenes which are always super hype, and there's a bunch of cool gameplay stuff that I know everyone loves, but it sometimes just feels like it takes so long to get to the parts that are actually relevant to the story. Again, this game is really good and amazing, it's just that I think a lot of people would expect me to put it at number one, so I feel like I have to take more time to explain why it isn't there than actually praising it. KH2 is still definitely worth all the praise it gets. Number 3. Dream Drop Distance Ooh, I get the feeling this is gonna be another controversial one. Let's start with the bad. Yes, this was the game to really muddy up the plot. The way DDD starts just makes me cringe every time. Like, it just throws you into the deep end of things that makes zero sense, and then tries to explain all of it through broken up flashbacks. But in my opinion, it goes uphill from there pretty fast. Remember what I said about KH2's middle being a tiny bit boring? Well, Dream Drop Distance actually has a really interesting B-plot going on while the heroes are off doing their thing. It is kinda short, but it's still exciting enough to carry me over while the Disney worlds are happening. That's a big part of why I decided to rank it above KH2. And then, the ending. This game's ending was what cemented who my favorite character is, and besides that, this whole ending is just so special. It has some of my favorite interactions in the whole series, and it really just hits you in the feels. There's a lot of plot to keep track of here, but it's just so worth it. Number 2, 358 Days Over 2. I honestly don't even know where to start with this one, it's just that good. Yes, it's a bit tedious and repetitive, but I really don't care. I love all three of the main characters, so watching them sit eating ice cream and talking about what it means to exist over and over is just fine with me. And of course, that ending. I'm having a really hard time figuring out how to say why I love this story so much without spoiling anything, so I'll just say the feels, I guess. It was actually really close to being number one, 
but a big reason that it's not is because of how hard it is to experience the entire story in the way it was originally meant to be. The HD movie is fine, it has really good voice acting, only sometimes impeded by the fact that the VAs had to sync up with the mouth movements which were based on the Japanese voice acting, but it leaves out a lot of my favorite Shion moments. She just kind of feels boring as a character in the movie. That's why in my previous video talking about Kingdom Hearts, I recommended watching it in Everglow's timeline, but with lots of stipulations. Now though, I've made a detailed document, link in description, saying which timestamps to watch in the timeline to avoid spoilers, which is probably what I should have done in the first place. I tried my hardest to make it good to watch before KH2, even though Days actually came out after that. And that's another thing that ever so slightly annoys me about Days, is that it's hard, at least for me, to know when to recommend to new people to watch it. Like, it enhances so much of KH2's story, but also spoils some parts. I'd still say, if you follow that document in the description, that it should come before KH2 for reasons that have lots of spoilers, and I don't have time to talk about now. My point is that this game's story is really good, and Shion is best girl. Fight me! Number 1. Kingdom Hearts 3. I feel like I need to preface this with a little more of my background with the series. Before I actually got into it, I had heard people talking about it for a while on YouTube, especially with KH3's release fast approaching. Then after the game came out, a streamer that I watched said that he was planning on playing it on stream, so I decided to watch a few videos summarizing the story so far so that I would understand what was going on. And then I was curious about how it ended, so I went and watched KH3's cutscenes on my own time. All that is to say, Kingdom Hearts 3 was my first Kingdom Hearts game. This was the game that really made me get it. I had no idea what was going on a lot of the time, and yet I realized that the characters and their relationships with each other are what makes this series special. So I might be a little bit biased when I rank KH3 at number 1. Yes, it's got flaws. Yes, there are things that people were expecting the story to do that it did not. I've heard all the reasons that people say it's not good, but I've decided that I just don't care. Cage 3 is such a satisfying end to the Dark Seeker saga, and it does an amazing job setting up the future of the series as well. Another reason I might enjoy it better than the others is just because of how good it looks. The movement in the cutscenes just feels so much freer than the ones from the other games, and it just makes it so enjoyable to watch. Not to mention how it has some of the best writing and voice acting so far. Plus, KH3 has the best plot twist reveal scene in the entire series. Like seriously, there aren't many scenes from anything that I'd call perfect, but that one comes really close. And the Remind DLC just adds a whole nother layer to the story that makes it even better. Also, none of the other games have this. I'm sorry, you just can't beat this. Thanks for sticking around until the end guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you watched this whole thing but still haven't played the Kingdom Hearts games or watched the cutscenes online or anything, but you think you would like them, check out my video on why I think Undertale fans would like Kingdom Hearts, link in description, where I go into detail, spoiler free detail, about which order of playing or watching the games will bring you the best experience with the story and why I think it should be in that particular order because trust me, it can get complicated. I except just ignore all the timestamps and stuff I gave for 358 Days Over 2 and just use the Google document I linked in the description of this video instead and that video, I linked it there too. If you want more consistent updates from me on future projects, be sure to follow me on Twitter at GamesPhil and I will see you in whichever video of mine you choose to watch next. Bye!